Welcome back here to Open. Darren Jaime here with you. So glad to have you share with us as we continue to bring you the news, the information, and the things that you need to know as COVID-19 continues to affect New Yorkers all across our five boroughs. When we talk about uh, the five boroughs, when we talk about New York City and state, one of the greatest challenges uh, that really a lot of people are facing in this time is dealing with PPE. Our next guest, front and center, boots on the ground in dealing with that and also making sure that the residents of his community are well represented. We are pleased to have Brad Hoyleman, who's the New York State Senator of the 27th District. And Senator, good to have you. Nice to see you, Darren. And thank you, and thanks so much for hanging with us. Listen, um, talk to us first of all, and give us a little bit of an overview about how your district is doing amidst all that's going on. Well, I think um, like every borough, uh, we've been hit really hard. Uh, but not as hard as, frankly, the Bronx or, uh, or Queens or, or, or Brooklyn. Um, I think that what we're seeing, though, in my district is mass unemployment and a real lack of housing security because tenants are unable to make their rent, whether they're commercial or residential. So we're seeing in Manhattan, after we had the initial wave of infections, a real economic stressful time for many of my constituents. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know it's a real stressful time. I know restaurants are actually doing some things to try to take the stress off of uh, some of the workers who are essential during this time, particularly for takeout and delivery. Uh, your thoughts? Well, uh, I think takeout and delivery alcohol is a way to make some extra revenue during this very difficult time for those restaurants that are open. A lot of my constituents have seen their favorite restaurants and bars close over the last few weeks. It's very sad to walk along Bleecker Street or in places in Chelsea along Ninth Avenue, for example, uh, and on the Upper West Side where I represent, and to see just row after row, store after store, restaurant after restaurant shuttered. So I've introduced legislation that would allow restaurants to continue their takeout and delivery alcohol scheme for two years after the pandemic is over. I hope we can get some traction on that bill. It would involve community board and municipal input. But I think it would really, Darren, extend a very essential lifeline out to these small businesses during this incredibly different, difficult time. We wanna see these restaurants come back. They employ a lot of people. They are the mainstay of many of our blocks here uh, in Manhattan. And uh, they're, like, they're like old friends who, who you wanna see back as soon as possible. Yeah, and give us a little bit, because you, you you're, you're asking uh, legislation to amend uh, section 593 of the labor law. and. Uh, that would make sure that no New Yorkers disqualified from receiving uh, unemployment insurance for taking health precautions during COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So share with us a little bit about that. Well, the notion there is kind of inspired by what's been happening across the country where there's been a lot of pressure for businesses to reopen. And what I'm concerned about and what my colleagues are concerned about is that they'll reopen and put their employees at risk. No worker should have to go to a workplace that is unsafe or unsanitary or might risk their health. So this would give an option for workers to say, no, my health's more important. I'm not working there and I still want to file for unemployment insurance. Now, my legislation has been incorporated since then into a larger unemployment bill um, that is being put forward by Senator Andrew Gernardis. So I'm hopeful we can pass that soon up in Albany. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talking about Albany, a lot of challenges up there. I'll come back to Albany in a second. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, New York City. Well, Albany and New York City have had their conversations about the transit system. I, I know that you're a proponent of wanting that 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week transit system uh, and wanting full subway service. Uh, give us a little bit about that uh, because we know that the – the transit system was supposed to shut down for sanitization, but you're calling for a 24-7 service. Yes. Well, I'm, uh, you know, alarmed at the fact that for the first time in 115 years, we no longer have 24-7 subway service. A lot of essential workers, a lot of working class New Yorkers, a lot of New Yorkers use that subway 
during the off hours. That's what makes our city so unique. It's a real selling point, our mass transit system, you know, for residents and for businesses that want to locate here. I'm concerned that when the pandemic is over, we're going to slide into new rationales for keeping the subway system uh, operating at reduced hours, like revenue, uh, for example. And so my bill would call for, at the very least, a vote of the MTA board and the board of New York City Transit in order to keep, um, you know, the subway service suspended. Uh, that's the very least what we owe New Yorkers is a public hearing on that incredibly important question. Yeah, yeah. And um, when I think about, you know, New Yorkers and traveling on the subway, of course, a lot of people travel from day to day doing their work. Um, but then New York was also the site for tourists. And we know that tourism has definitely been affected, uh, particularly your area. You talk about Bleecker Street. I mean, when people come to New York, they come downtown, they're taking a look around around that part. How do you see tourism playing out uh, post coronavirus? Well, you know, I think we have to get our health back first. The health back in the Bronx, in Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Manhattan, everywhere. Um, we and then from the health we can start to build our businesses but we can take steps now to support mm -hmm. those small businesses uh to support our restaurants our bars which are the mainstay you know i represent times square too the entire theater district and lincoln center and the public theater so you know what's the future of arts i mean that is a big question because you know congregating is essential to going to see a broadway show um, and that's a shared experience that we may not see for some time. So we need to consider how we can safely reopen Broadway, uh, but it's going to be a while before we're at that point. It's number four on the phased reopenings. I do think there are some reopenings that might happen sooner than mm -hmm. phase four in the arts and culture. And one of those is museums. Um, you've been to museums where they have time tickets and uh, they let, you know, people in at a certain amount of time. Maybe there's no seating. Maybe they have people cleaning, you know, the areas um, after a certain number of visitors. I think we can manage that. So I'm going to make the case at some point that we can move museums ahead of, uh, say, Broadway shows from phase four to maybe phase three. You, but, think, museums, you, think, you think museums can actually work? I, I think I think we're already doing museums in a time ticketing fashion. You know, we they have electronic um uh, surveillance uh in a way that allows limited numbers of people in already the governor's allowing congregations of 10 people or fewer so while it may not be you know a huge revenue generator for museums um i think that they could allow folks to trickle in uh, in a manner that is safe and uh you know adheres to the governor's uh, orders that's not true probably for broadway shows Having a Broadway show at 25% capacity is probably a loss leader for them. Uh, so, you know, I think that's going to be a longer conversation, unfortunately. And, you know, hopefully with the numbers dropping, hospitalizations, um, intubations, um, cases of uh, active COVID-19, uh, you know, we see a light at the end of the tunnel. I am concerned, like a lot of New Yorkers, about a second wave. So we all have to you know, continue to wear our face mask, wash our hands and socially distance. We're doing it and we're beating the virus. Um, every night at seven o'clock, I have a bullhorn that I yell out of my 15th story apartment to say that very message that, you know, we're defeating the virus because of a collective effort. That's very inspiring for me as a New Yorker. Um, but it's a tough slog. And on a day like Memorial Day, when we all should be out, you know, with our friends, uh, cooking uh, out, um, you know, we're indoors. So it's, um, it's difficult. There's no doubt. And I think about, you know, I think about Darren, the, the, the individual, the family, uh, they may be unemployed. Uh, they may have sickness or death uh, in their, in their life. They may be homeschooling their kids, you know, because of the uh, distance learning. Um, and they may be worried about paying the rent and getting evicted. Can you imagine that perfect storm? Well, yeah. I'm sure you can because it's not that uncommon. In our yeah, it's not. It's not. And really, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people are trying to deal with what we call this this storm and this virus. And 
you know, trying to navigate. But Senator, thank you so much for the time of sharing. I think that uh, for a lot of us here, uh, we all share the same concern, uh, progression and also caution. Thanks a lot for being with us here on Open. Thanks, Darren. And I just want if I could add just one more thing, the, mm -hmm. the Senate and Assembly had a hearing on the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on minority communities. And that's going to be a conversation that we need to drill down on as we emerge from the virus. What are the systemic racial inequalities that have led to COVID-19 having this devastating, devastating impact uh, on black and brown people? I, I'm, mm -hmm. As the Judiciary Committee Chair, it's something I'm going to be focused on with my colleagues, my Senate colleagues in particular from the Bronx. Have you back on the show and we'll talk more about it. Senator Holyman, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. All right, listen, we want you to stay with us. We do have more open coming up. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> 